I'm going to start this video off that has to do with being converted by reading Mark chapter 4 verses 3 to 12. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and, be, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit, that sprang up and increased, and brought forth, some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. Lest at any time they should be converted. And I'm going to read Matthew 18, verses 2 to 6 that has to do with being converted. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now I'm going to read some verses in Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, and then in chapter 3 of Acts about being converted. This is Acts 1, verses 1 to 8. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, in whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So they did start to speak boldly after they received the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to read a little bit about that, them receiving it in Acts chapter 2. This is verse 1 to 4. And, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So when they received the Holy Ghost, they received power. And they did speak much differently after, after they received that. Now this is Peter speaking in Acts chapter 3. This is verse 19 to 21. Repent ye therefore, says Peter, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of re refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven 
must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now let's back up to Luke chapter 22 before Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. This is verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And this is a good reason why there's so much conflict between people. There's a lot of carnal-minded people who are having problems with what spiritual-minded people are saying who who have been converted and um, this is this has a lot to do with uh, you know these rapture this rapture cult uh, that that uh, thinks they're gonna uh, somehow get delivered out of all their idolatry while they're in it has a problem with the things that I say and a lot of other spiritual people say uh, against that and I've done videos about that I'd be glad to uh, if anybody has a question about those things I'd be glad to talk to you about them but I I felt led to um, talk about this conversion that it spoke that is spoken of in in both the Old and New Testaments this is very important that people understand this. In Hebrews it talks about how that after uh, someone has done the will of God they might receive the promise. And of course Christ said in Matthew chapter 7 that few find life. It's very important. Um, you know a lot of people are living for a, a, a lifetime, a short lifetime of, of idolatry and then that's it. And then other others are going to go on to eternal life in Christ. So this is what I was led to talk about. Thank you.